And I'm not breaking any news here when the opinion polls have relentlessly told us that there is due to be a change of government, or apparently at least people thinking about it, between now and May, when most likely the election is going to take place. The headlines, well, they don't read well for the government or any of its supporters. But interestingly, there was a piece that was done by the New South Wales political reporter for The Australian newspaper over the weekend where he actually went and talked to normal people, not people with Twitter, not people in the media, people well and truly outside the bubble who have other things in their life apart from all-day, everyday politics. He had a chat specifically to a bunch of tradies to see whether the types of people who elected Morrison in 2019 have turned on him going into 2022. Now, forgive me, it's not videotaped, but I do have to show you a couple of quotes because these are what real people are thinking in the seat of Lindsay which, of course, is, one, Labor would be desperately needing to win if it is to take government, and the government desperately needs to hold on to if it is a chance of being able to make the most of its base. Here's what some of the tradies told the newspaper over the weekend here. Well, uh, that um, most of these people, however, are disengaged and undecided, and they're profoundly indifferent to the ballyhoo of political commentary and sermonising on social media. Surprise, surprise, Twitter isn't real life. The obsessions of Channel 2, Radio National, the insiders, it doesn't matter to real people. When asked, though, I haven't really got an opinion about Anthony Albanese, to be honest, said Mick. He said in the car park at Bunnings at Penrith, I think Morrison's better. I think he's doing a pretty good job. It's not a job that I want to be doing at the moment with all the going on with COVID and that. Bob, who's a 78-year-old, says, I don't know what I'm going to do. He says, Mr Morrison is on a track to a defeat, and he's cautious about his assessment, but he praises the Prime Minister's decision to cancel the $90 billion French submarines. He did the right thing by Australia there. I think he's not a bad sort of dude, but he wouldn't want to anymore. So you get straight talk when you go to Bunnings and you get straight talk in the car park when you talk to tradies, particularly in Penrith. Rob says here about the Prime Minister, you can see it in his attitude if he faces, uh, in the faces that he pulls, he's turning on the Prime Minister here. 34 year old who builds sets and props for the movie industry says, he's just quite honestly not really hiding what he is. And to be honest, so many people have complained about him. So this is why you get the narratives all the time, because they just want the noise factor. There's so much corruption, and that is not even arguable. Well, I think it is, but okay. Uh, and Des gives us a little insight into compulsory voting. I'll just do what my wife tells me to do. He goes on to say, unless there's a good-looking woman. <laughs> so the point is, while you and I are all about politics every day, and I like to call out the narratives because the reality is in compulsory voting, people who have got other things going on in their lives, well, they're the ones who will ultimately decide. And today, the Liberal Party has released a television ad that is there to start firming up the suspicions about each way elbow. I think it's a beauty. Do you think this will change your vote? It launched today. After spending his entire adult life in professional politics, what do we actually know about Anthony Albanese? He's never held a financial portfolio, never held a national security portfolio, he's never delivered a budget. He supported higher taxes on retirees, housing, super and inheritances and unwinding Australia's strong border protection. But lately, no one knows what he stands for. Don't risk our recovery with Labor. That, of course, is the central push about what the choice is at the upcoming election. Television ads are often what people parrot back when you start talking to voters in focus groups about which way they're going to go. Now, we know the negative ads that are coming when it comes to the Prime Minister, but it is important that the Liberal Party has gone first. There's a strategic decision here. To start the firing, uh, the starter's gun on the election means the ads. And the ads will run from today, and yes, you'll be able to quote them in your sleep, because there'll be so many of them. That's exactly the logic of these ads and, obviously, a pretty firm case against a Prime Minister in Albanese who, as I mentioned before, when asked, says climate is more important than China, his own words, his own opinion, when talking about the relationship with places like the United States.